Hi everyone! The topic of today's pick a card reading is what they wish they could say to you now. So in today's pick a card reading, we're going to find out what the person on your mind wishes that they could say to you now. So maybe this is someone who you haven't spoken to in a while, or maybe this is someone that you grew apart from, or maybe the connection has ended, or maybe your circumstances are something different. Either way, we are going to find out what this person wishes they could tell you if they could speak to you right now. Remember, this is a general reading. Take what resonates, leave what does not. These readings are always meant to empower you. And remember, this is just information. You don't have to do anything with it. If you feel like checking out my podcast or my online shop, check out the links in the description. And now I am going to go over a few instructions if you are new to pick a card readings. So here's how it works. The first thing that you're going to do is you are going to pick the pile that you are the most intuitively drawn to. On top of each and every one of these piles is a carnelian crystal, and that is great for things like creativity and fertility and passion and um, all things sacral chakra. So we have um, carnelian in just a couple different shapes and sizes. So we have pile one here with the egg card. We have pile two here with the kite card. Pile three here with like the camping tent card. And then pile four here with the bluebird card. You can choose one pile. You can choose more than one if you have more than one person in mind. Or you can choose all of them. It is up to you. But when you are ready and you've chosen your pile or piles, go to the description of this video and find the timestamp that is linked to your pile so you can skip ahead to your reading all about answering the question, what they wish they could say to you now. Thank you so much for letting me read for you and I will see you on the other side. Hi pile one, welcome to your reading. Let's dive in. Okay, so pile one, here's what you got. You got the Page of Flowers, so this is the Page of Wands in the Alice in Wonderland deck. Um, you also got Turkey Spirit, Give Gratitude and Grace. Get that into focus. Um, but this one you got in reverse, so we're going to put that there. You also got Last Quarter Moon in Pisces, Talk Less, Feel More. We also have Continuance, Apple. We have Love. We have the Egg card that you got in the beginning of the reading. And then you got a Heart Chakra card here. And then you have Watermelon Tourmaline, Balanced Emotions. And then you have a Joy card. And this one says small and mighty. So with the page of flowers here, or the page of wands, I feel like the person on your mind wishes that they could express their enthusiasm for you. Um, you know, either what, what was or what is. I feel like there's a lot of excitement here and there's, there's a lot of energy here too. So I do feel like this person wants to like fill you in, catch you up, or kind of get back up to speed with you on how things have been going. I feel like you definitely ignite something within this person, Pile One. And I also feel like this person wishes that they had been more open-minded and receptive to new ideas and opportunities and adventures that came their way, right? I feel like this person has a willingness to explore and try things that they maybe have never considered before. And so I feel like this person probably wishes that they could have taken more action in some way as it has to do with your connection. Um, you know, maybe they're like someone who's a very big dreamer, but they didn't take the steps to manifest their vision into reality. And I feel like they didn't have the confidence in themselves and their abilities in some way. So I definitely feel like there's a sense of regret of wishing they would have asserted themselves or like taken the lead when it came to a specific circumstance with you. Um, I really do think that this person is definitely curious about you and wonders about you. And I feel like they wish that they, you know, would have communicated clearly with you in the past. And I feel like they weren't as direct and clear as they wish they could have been with like how they truly felt about you. We also have 
turkey spirit here and it says give with gratitude and grace so i feel like this person felt like they didn't have like enough to give to you or maybe they didn't have the means to give you everything that they felt you deserved in their eyes i feel like they struggled with having an abundance mindset and they had a tough time with shifting their focus from what they lacked to what they had and they could actually create so i also feel like they had difficulty with letting go of fear and scarcity and lack and I'm not sure if you're still in touch with this person or not, but I feel like it took your absence for them to feel gratitude for your presence and it saddens them. So yeah, I feel like you might have had to set some boundaries when it came to this connection. Like for some of you, if you weren't feeling valued or appreciated by this person, you might have removed yourself from their life, you know, entirely. So I feel like now they miss you and that's that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? So I feel like a lot of you here might be feeling like you gave too much to this person at the expense of your well-being. Maybe it led you to feelings of like burnout and depletion, but this person definitely misses being a part of your community or circle and they acknowledge you needing to honor your worth and walk away from um, like the way that they were treating you. So yes. We also have the last quarter moon in Pisces here. It says talk less and feel more. So I do feel like this person wishes that they relied more on their intuition and like less on rational thinking. So with the last quarter moon in Pisces, it might have been tough for them to be present in the moment and fully engage with their emotions. Like I'm feeling like they were getting caught up in like overthinking or like excessive analysis. And I feel like your connection with this person was definitely a catalyst for them to begin to surrender and to accept the natural flow of life. Um, and now I do feel like they're starting to recognize that they need to let go of the need to control or micromanage everything. When we're talking about the last quarter moon, it represents a um, phase of transition and release, and it also marks the end of the lunar cycles waning phase and the beginning of the waxing phase so this could suggest that maybe this person needs to let go of things that no longer serve them whether their emotions or habits or situations in order to make room for new growth and opportunities so yeah maybe this is someone that you had to let go of or put some distance between yourself and this person also, as the moon decreases in size during the last quarter phase, it also encourages things like introspection and reflection. So I do feel like this person is now taking the time to evaluate things, assess goals, and consider any necessary adjustments or changes moving forward. I do feel like this person wishes that they could find harmony with you. And in some interpretations, the last quarter moon signifies the completion of the cycle or like a project so it might prompt us to tie up loose ends or resolve lingering issues and really prepare for closure before embarking on a new beginning and um, with the upcoming new moon so I'm not sure if hearing this information will help to bring you some closure with this connection or if it will help to mend things from the past either way I do feel like this is a really important time for you know, releasing negativity, whether it's negative thoughts or emotions or patterns of behavior, but this is definitely a time to shed emotional baggage and embrace a more positive mindset as we move forward. There's definitely a lot of wisdom and maturity that was gained through things that you've experienced with this connection, and I feel like it might have brought you through a phase of personal growth and enlightenment. I think that you're going to apply what you've learned in this connection with future connections, so... We also have the continuance card here and it says apple so this is capricorn energy here we have capricorn um i do feel like this person wishes that they could either continue a connection with you maybe they wish they could persevere through challenges and gain some momentum but also remember this is all just information you don't have to do anything about it especially if it's one of those situations where you no longer desire to continue with this connection but I do feel like this person is very tempted to reach out to you or reconnect with you in some way. Um, you know, because Apple, like, symbolically, it can be seen as something that's, like, symbolic of t temptation. This card could also come as a reminder to stay focused and resist temptation or distractions that could, like, derail your progress and your growth. 
Now we have the love card. So with the love card, I'm really feeling like this person wishes that they could express like how much they care about you, how much love they have for you. Now, if this is a situation where like they say one thing, but then they act another way, like that's, you know, for you to digest and to think about because um, we do know that there's a difference between what people say and what they do. But yeah, this person definitely has a lot of love for you. They have a lot of um, positive feelings about you and they could even be bummed that maybe this connection like didn't turn out the way that they really wanted it to. We also have the egg in the nest card. And so I definitely think that this person feels like you were their sanctuary. You were definitely an important part of their community. I feel like you you gave off like very safe and stable vibes and you're very much like a stabilizing, nurturing, protective force, um, or you were in this person's life. Now we also have hope is a waking dream, Aristotle. So yeah, I do feel like this person might have a little bit of hope still left. Like maybe they feel like, um, they can mend things with you or maybe they, they want to, and they're not sure whether you want to. Um, but yeah, that's just the energy I'm picking up on right now. We also have um, a heart chakra crystal. This one says watermelon tourmaline, balanced emotions, and the emotional qualities here says that it helps restore balance from emotional extremes, reduces emotional barriers, brings self-love and general happiness, accesses the deepest parts of the heart, cleans and heals deep emotional wounds, accelerates forgiveness, combats depression and anxiety. And the mantra here says, I love myself as I am. So. Yeah, I do think that maybe this situation, the other person, maybe you, um, would benefit from using something like watermelon tourmaline to balance your emotions, um, to heal your emotions, to heal past emotional wounds. So yeah, watermelon tourmaline. Um, another one that's great for balancing your emotions, I love to use blue appetite. I also like to use lapidolite too. So. Um, definitely check out my online shop. I do have, um, those crystals in my crystal shop. Don't quite have watermelon tourmaline, but I do have other alternatives that will help with balancing and soothing and, you know, the, the crystals that are said to, to heal emotions. So yes, we also have small and mighty. So this one says, Set the intention today to give yourself more space during the in-between moments. Waiting in line to get coffee, instead of looking at your phone, try giving your mind a break and embrace the free moment. See if you can witness the little joys all around you. Sometimes we move so fast through life that we miss out on the joys of, oh, that we miss out on the small joys of everyday living. And when we do not get free moments, we tend to fill them up by taking in more information like responding to emails, texting, reading articles, or scrolling through, through social media. As we allow more room for joy, we might be surprised by just how much we find. As we allow more room for joy, we might be surprised by how much we find. So this card is really prompting you to make room for the small joys in life, make room for the little things, it's the little things that matter. Um, and sometimes the small things that, you know, do contribute to our joy, they add up, right? So I think it's just asking, you know, us to be more conscious about giving yourself more space in the in-between moments and filling them with little bits of joy, no matter how simple they can be, right? So, okay, let's roll our astro dice and we can get more clarifying information, maybe some confirmation about who this person is exactly. Oop, everything's falling. Okay, so we have Saturn in Capricorn in the seventh house. In astrology, Saturn here represents things like structure and responsibility and authority. The seventh house is associated with things like partnerships and relationships and collaborations. So if someone like who has Saturn in Capricorn in the seventh house, it can indicate someone who has certain like um, characteristics, right? So maybe this person, and I'm not saying that this person has to have Saturn and Capricorn in the seventh house, but we're looking out for traits and characteristics about this person that maybe you can use to confirm or 
um, to not confirm whether this, you know, this is the person you're thinking of. So, um, this person might have, um, this person might tend to approach relationships with like a serious and practical mindset. Maybe they value things like stability and security and commitment to their partnerships. I feel like they might be a little cautious about entering relationships and maybe they prefer to take their time to assess the long-term potential. Um, I do think that this person definitely takes their commitment seriously and they're willing to put in the necessary effort to make their relationships work. Um, I do think that they also feel this duty to support and assist their partners in achieving their goals. Now, I do think that this person may have some traditional views when it comes to like marriage or commitment or even like gender ro roles within partnerships. So maybe they seek, you know, stability and security through these established structures and through long-term planning. Um, I definitely think that with this placement, it can, um, it can bring stability and commitment to relationships, but it can also bring challenges too. So, um, I don't know. I think there's definitely this need for this person to overcome fears and insecurities that are related to like commitment or intimacy. And I do think that this person might also struggle to balance their professional work with their like personal relationships, right? So I think they're still learning how to prioritize and manage their time effectively to ensure that their relationships really do receive the attention and the care that they deserve. So that's a little bit more about this person, what they wish they could say to you. I hope that you enjoyed this reading. Please give this video a like if it resonates. It really helps the channel. Comment below with what pile you chose. I love to chat with you all in the comments. Subscribe if you have not already. Thank you. I hope to see you back on another video after this. I do have a whole pick a card playlist that you can, um, you know, look through. I have a lot of different topics there, but if not this time, I will see you back on the next reading. Bye pile one. Hi pile two. Welcome to your reading and let's dive in. Okay, so pile two, the first card that you have is the tower in reverse. So the tower, but in the reversed position. You also have a skunk spirit, know your worth. You have first quarter moon in Pisces, honor your feelings. You also have Transition, Cauliflower. You have Letting Go. You have the Kite card that you chose in the beginning of the reading. You have a Throat Chakra card and you have Turquoise. And then you've got a Wild card and this one says Surprise. With the tower here in reverse, I feel like the person on your mind wishes that they could have avoided some sort of like major upheaval or major disaster with you in this connection. I'm feeling like they wish that they would have taken the proactive steps to prevent like a crisis from occurring or that they wish that they could have navigated a turbulent situation in a better way. I do feel like this person probably felt some resistance to necessary changes or a reluctance to confront issues that need to be addressed. I feel like they might have been clinging to old patterns or structures that were ultimately hindering their growth and their progress. So maybe this is a connection that has changed over time, but I do feel like there could be some pent up or like repressed emotions um, with this connection. And, you know, maybe this person wishes that they could acknowledge and confront any sort of like deep seated issues or emotional wounds that you know, have been buried like between you two. And the tower in the reverse position can also symbolize things like the process of rebuilding and reorganizing life after a period of crisis or a period of upheaval. So maybe this person wishes that they could lay down new foundations and structures with you that feel more stable and sustainable in the long run. We also have skunk spirit. This one says, know your worth. So whatever happened between you and this person, I feel like it's prompted a lot of self-reflection for the both of you. I do feel like this could have been a time when you were able to more clearly understand your values and your strengths and your desires. I think that many of you have come to know yourself a little more deeply during this process. 
and I do feel like you're able to recognize your worth and stay true to yourself. So maybe what happened with this connection has taught you to embrace all aspects of yourself, right? Your flaws, your imperfections, really drawing in more acceptance and building that self-worth and cultivating deeper authenticity in your life. I definitely feel like many of you here had to set boundaries with this person. Some of you here had to establish clear boundaries that honor your needs and values and your personal space. And I think that these boundaries were essential for protecting your well-being. This is definitely a connection that has taught you to listen to your inner voice and to trust your intu intuition. Maybe your instincts or your gut you know, responses have led you towards making choices that um, are more aligned with your authentic self and you know ultimately it'll lead you to your greater fulfillment so um you know i think that some of you here had to work up the courage to express yourself authentically even if it meant being vulnerable or you know facing criticism and i feel like this experience has also taught you how to be a lot more gentle with yourself and to practice self-compassion so you know, I feel like you've learned how to treat yourself with the same kindness and understanding that you would offer to a friend. And this has just really brought you this deep understanding that you are worthy of love and belonging just the way you are. So we also have the first moon, uh, first quarter moon in Pisces, honor your feelings. With this card, I do think that this connection definitely taught you to trust that inner guidance and that inner voice like we spoke about before even if it doesn't seem logical, right? Because Pisces is associated with things like creativity and imagination. So maybe some of you here have used this time to heal and to express yourself through things like art or music or writing or dance or creating something, right? I think that creative expression is a really powerful way to process emotions and connect with your innermost self. So again, I feel like this is another confirmation about setting boundaries, right? Like this connection has probably taught you how to recognize when certain situations or relationships are draining your energy um, or triggering negative emotions, right? And so I do think that you've learned a lot about setting boundaries in this connection. Pisces is also deeply connected to the spiritual realm. So maybe some of you here have found that maybe what you've been through has been a catalyst to one of your spiritual awakenings, right? Maybe it's brought you to spend more time in nature and meditate or to engage in spiritual practices that really do nurture your soul and deeper your connection to something greater than yourself. We also have Transition, Cauliflower. Um, with this card, this is Cancer Energy, and I also feel like the person on your mind wishes that they could have been a little bit more adaptable and flexible with you. I do get the feeling that they wish that they could have just embraced change with an open mind and a willingness to adjust to certain situations. I do feel like they also wish they could have nourished this connection with you more in the past and that they feel very transformed by the connection that you had with them. And I do feel like they're wanting to reinvent themselves a little bit. I feel like this person wants to like catch up with you, wants to update you on their personal growth and explore new possibilities with moving forward with you in some way. I do feel like you are a very grounding and stabilizing force in this person's life. Again, this is just information. You don't have to do anything about it, especially if this is a connection that you want to move forward from or that you're no longer interested in building that connection. Or maybe it's not healthy, right, to build that connection back with this person. Um, it'll all just depend on your specific situation. Only you will know. Um, we do have the letting go card here. So... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you had to let this person go or maybe the other person let you go or there's something about letting go in this connection that seems very prominent here. Um, and I think it's an important message that like when we let go, when we loosen our grip, when we um, don't micromanage and try to control every single little thing in our life, a lot, a lot of times like better things flow into our life without us even trying that hard, right? So there is this message to let go. So we also have the kite card here. And I think this can also be seen as something of like letting go also, letting something fly, letting something free. Um, and then this card says, go where you feel most alive. So yeah, I do think that some of you here definitely had to set boundaries to remove yourself from the situation and to open yourself up to go where you feel most alive, where you feel most free where you feel most autonomous, but then also I do feel like this person 
feels like you brought that feeling to them that you made them feel the most alive so there's that we also have turquoise turquoise this is a throat chakra crystal um, communication and then the emotional qualities here says enables communication in all forms helps draw out words to best express one's inner truth helps release withheld or suppressed communication draws out physical mental emotional negativity releases emotional tension this one says i freely express my deepest truths yes so you know definitely i think this person i definitely think this person wants to be in communication with you or wishes that they would have communicated with you better um remember again just information you don't have to do anything with it um this could also mean that turquoise could be a powerful crystal or gemstone that you would you know want to work with if you want to focus on things like um, communicating in a better way releasing any sort of suppressed communication and really healing any sort of like emotional negativity or emotional tension turquoise will be um, your guide on that one uh, but if you also want to know more about other crystals that can help you with communication other throat chakra crystals we do have some in my crystal shop, my online shop, so definitely check that out in the description. I have things like Blue Appetite, um, those are the kind of crystals that are associated with your throat chakra, so link is in the description if you're interested in checking out my shop. Um, I just created a wholesale page too, so you guys can browse through that if you feel like it. We also have the surprise card. so. This card says, surprise, do you love the way it feels when the unexpected happens, like 30 friends showing up out of nowhere on your birthday, or would you rather know exactly what's going to happen, when, and the specific dress code? Some of us like surprise, and some of us really don't. Consider two times you were surprised, a surprise that sparked joy, and one you had where you didn't have control, but you wish you had. When we've had difficult surprises in our life, our brain sometimes tries to protect us by deciding that... All surprise is bad. Give your brain a chance to see that surprise can have both effects. Take a moment to consider that while we can't always predict what surprises will happen, we can decide how we will respond. So give your brain a chance to see that surprise can have both effects. So I don't know if some of you out there have had to um, or have been surprised by this connection, maybe in a good way, maybe in kind of not so good way. Like I'm feeling like for some of you, um, it's almost like the rug was pulled out from under your feet like I don't know if this connection ended like abruptly or the letting go of this connection like really surprised you really surprised the other person maybe when you laid down your boundaries and kind of stood on them and really uh, maintain those boundaries maybe it really surprised the other person so there is this element of surprise um, kind of this like shock value I don't know maybe this person surprised you with something in the past good or bad not entirely sure but um yeah this is also a prompt too for you to just think about like think about a surprise that sparked joy think about a surprise that did not and then give your brain that chance to see that surprise can produce both effects so yes this is part of the reading now where i want to get more information from our astro dice um to get more kind of clarifying details on this person who they are so who is this person we have Mars in Virgo in the seventh house. So maybe for some of you, this person does have Mars in Virgo in the seventh house, but let's get some characteristics and some details about this person and what they're like. So um, I think that this person definitely approaches partnership with a keen eye for detail. Maybe they have this like strong sense of analysis. I think that what they do is they carefully assess their partners and they look for things like practicality, reliability, and compatibility. I also think that maybe there is this like need for perfectionism in the relationship. So I think this person definitely has high standards for themselves and their partners. And they do seek things like harmony and order and efficiency in their interactions. So I feel like this is the kind of person that wants to improve and refine their partnerships continuously. And Virgo is also associated with health and wellness and 
Mars here could emphasize this importance of like maintaining physical and mental well-being within the relationship. So this curse this person could be proactive about like addressing any health related issues. Um, and they I think they're focused on creating like this healthy and balanced lifestyle together. Um, <clears throat> I think that this person could probably find fulfillment in like service oriented relationships. Um, I don't know whether they find fulfillment in like supporting and assisting their partners. Maybe they offer practical help and solutions to challenges that could arise. But yeah, this goes back to like communication, right? I feel like when this person, or I don't know whether they didn't communicate well before, but now I feel like they feel this confidence that they will be able to articulate in a detail oriented way or in a, in a methodical way, um, communicate, you know, like I feel like they want to communicate address conflicts, address like challenges that arise. And I think that they might prefer to resolve issues in a more like rational discussion and come up with practical solutions rather than like just straight emotional expression. Now, I don't know if this person maybe has the potential to be a little critical or to overanalyze things uh, because Mars and Virgo can be very highly analytical, right? And very discerning. And so I don't know if they're prone towards criticism and kind of over analysis in their relationships. Um, I think that they do need to be mindful of being overly critical of themselves and their partners and to strive to cultivate acceptance and, you know, understanding instead. Um, again, I feel like this person could struggle with like work life balance. Um, I think they need to learn how to prioritize their time more effectively and to be sure that they can allocate enough attention and energy to their partnerships. So that is a little bit more about this person. I hope that you really enjoyed this reading pile too. Please give this video a like if it resonates. This really helps the channel. Comment below with what pile you chose. I love to chat with you all in the comments. Subscribe if you haven't already. Take care of yourself. I hope to see you back on the next video. Right after this, I do have a whole playlist of pick a cards for you to check out. But if not this time, I will see you back on the next video. Bye, Pile 2. Hi, Pile 3. Welcome to your reading. And now let's dive in. Okay, so Pile 3. The first card that you got is the High Priestess in reverse. So this one says High Priestess, Intuition, and Mystery. But it was in the reverse position. We also have Canary Spirit, Sing Your Own Song. It's in the reverse position. We have Last Quarter Moon in Leo, Lighten Up. And then we also have Passion, Beetroot. We have True Offering. That tent camping card you chose in the beginning. Heart Shocker card, we have Malachite. And then a Wild card. And we have comparison. So with the high priestess in reverse here, the person on your mind wishes that they could tell you that they definitely regret ignoring or suppressing their intuition in the past. So I feel like they were relying too much on logic and rationality rather than tapping into their own inner wisdom and intuition. So they definitely do have some regret around not trusting their gut feelings and their inner guidance. And they wish that they could tell you that they were lacking understanding or clarity in whatever situation your connection was in. So I feel like they feel confused or uncertain about their path forward with you. You've definitely been on their mind and they do take time to reflect on how they regarded your feelings in the past. I don't know if there's any secrets or hidden knowledge that weren't made apparent in this connection. Maybe there's a lot that has been left um, unsaid. But I do feel like they wish they could have been more honest with you and themselves. I'm not sure if this person has ever deceived you or you felt deceived by them. But again, things feel a little unclear or uncertain with this connection. Um, we do have the Canary Spirit in reverse. It says, sing your own song. So yeah, this person definitely wishes that they would have spoken and acted in alignment with their true self. I think that they wish that they would have let go of the need to please others at the expense of, you know, their authenticity and their relationship with you. Maybe they struggled with self-worth issues in the past, and I feel like 
now they're working through identifying and challenging any like limiting beliefs that might be coming up or that might be holding them back from expressing themselves fully and I'm not sure if this person considers themselves a little different or quirky than others around them but they've been working on the courage to be themselves even in the face of like fear or discomfort so you definitely were someone who accepted this person for who they were and they wish that they could have seen how you were part of their supportive community um, in the past and I do feel like you were someone who encouraged them to be true to themselves and you honestly felt like one of the few like-minded people who celebrated their diversity and their individuality so they definitely feel like they fumbled the ball with you here um we do have the last quarter moon in leo so with this card yeah i do feel like this person wishes that they would have embraced a little more playfulness with you and because leo is associated with things like creativity and joy and playfulness I think that they wish they would have approached this connection with a little bit more of a light heart. Um, I think that they wish that they would have had this like lighter, more carefree approach to life during your connection where they could find joy in the simple pleasures and laughter and in spontaneity. So this person definitely feels like they needed to let go of the need to be perfect or have everything figured out. I do think that they also have this feeling that they didn't get a chance to allow their inner light to shine brightly without inhibition. I feel like they could have had a hard time with living in the present moment and letting go of worries about the future or regrets about the past and you know I think that they wish they would have just focused fully on experiencing and appreciating the present moment. You were definitely like the source of laughter and joy and positivity in their life and so I think that they wish they could tell you that you naturally spread positivity and laughter wherever you go. They feel like your energy is infectious in the best of ways and your joyful attitude really uplifts them and others and creates this ripple effect of positivity in your surroundings. Now, we also have the Passion Beetroot card here. So this is Sagittarius energy and Beetroot's associated with passion um, talks about matters of the heart, right? Talks about sensuality, talks about romance. So I'm not sure if this person was a romantic connection to you in the past, or maybe there was some sort of romantic tension between you. Um, that could be a message for a select few of you out there. But I feel like if this is your case, then this person really does miss that close, intimate connection that they had with you. I don't feel like they have or make a lot of connections like that, where it feels deep and understanding and connected. I feel like they deal with a lot of like surface level people, so I think that's something that they would want to let you know. I think that they want you to know that you are one of a kind and they feel like they haven't really um, ever really experienced a connection like they have had with you, right? There's a lot of passion here, there's a lot of desire, and I think that this person wishes that they could have embraced any sort of changes as an opportunity for growth and renewal in their life. And you know, I feel like they... They needed to shed old habits or beliefs that no longer serve them and really do embrace like new beginnings because I really don't feel like they were prioritizing self-care and nourishment for themselves. I think that they had a tough time taking care of their physical and emotional and spiritual well-being which really didn't leave them feeling nourished and energized to pursue any of their passions like wholeheartedly. I feel the energy of feeling drained here with like not much more to give. So I do think that they wish that they had more patience, more persistence, more determination when it came to your connection. Um, I do feel like they wish they could tell you that they wish they stayed committed to maybe you or their goals or their passions, even in the face of challenges or setbacks, and that they wish that they trusted in their ability to overcome obstacles with passion and resilience. Um, we also have the true offering card here. So again, I feel like you were a gift to them. You were a true offering to them. You were very special to them. Now, I don't know if they handled this you know, relationship with care or whether they treated you right or the way that you were supposed to, but um, deep down in their heart, you, were a true, you are a true offering no matter what. Whether this person says it, whether another person says it, you are a true gift just because you are. And I think that that's a sentiment that this person can definitely back up and support as well. Now we do have this like tent in the forest card, um, maybe a little camping card. I do think that this person definitely saw you as someone who was their shelter, someone who was protective over them, someone that they could run to in times of 
um, need for like holding space or for, um, you know, being covered or shielded or protected in some way. I think that they really um, look to you for like solace and that kind of stuff. But we do also have sleep under the stars. So I don't know if for some of you, like maybe the outdoors was your thing. Maybe you used to hang out in nature. Maybe you both loved camping and you love to sleep under the stars. Um, maybe you both were really connected to the stars and astrology and astronomy and, you know, different kinds of things related to the stars. There is definitely this like celestial element to this connection. The next card that we have here is Malachite. This one says Mother Earth Healing. It's a heart chakra crystal. And then emotional qualities here says it connects with the earth spirits and nature. Oh, connects with the earth spirits and nature divas for nurturing, helps support mental and emotional healing, calms rage, and brings a sense of prosperity to attract wealth and good fortune, brings good humor, provides restoration after emotional depletion, and the mantra here says, I am nurtured in the arms of Mother Earth. So yeah, Malachite could be a great stone for you to work with if you would like to focus on heart chakra healing, um, focus on healing that is connected to the earth, connected to grounding. Um, and it also, you know, does things like attract wealth and good fortune. So it's always a plus. I do have Malachite in my online shop. Check out the link in the description if you're interested. We also have the comparison card here. So this one says, from the social feed to the sidewalk, comparison is the act of viewing ourselves in relation to others. What's great about comparison is that it can help us make sense of the world and navigate new situations. Sometimes when we feel inspired by someone, that inspiration can shift into comparison, which is totally normal. We're wired to compare. Think of a person who inspires you, whom you might also compare yourself to. What about them inspires you? See if you can sift out and honor their specific inspirational qualities while unhooking yourself from comparison, since you're most likely comparing their highlight reel to your real reel. Take a moment to consider that just like you, everyone has messy parts that not everyone knows about. Imperfection is what makes us human after all. And so again, imperfection is what makes us human after all. So um, I do think that the element of comparison and learning from that is definitely tied somewhere in this connection. I don't know whether this other person, maybe they were stuck in comparison and, you know, they were comparing themselves to, um, other, you know, another person and they, you know, didn't feel like worthy enough. I, I had mentioned earlier, they might've been struggled, struggling with self-worth issues, but I think like the idea of embracing imperfection is like huge when it comes to this connection, whether that's well, the two of you together, whether that's the two of you on your own. Um, I think this is something that both of you maybe have had to learn that um, you don't have to be perfect and that imperfection is what makes us human after all. So yes. The next thing I want to do here is I want to um, roll some astro dice to get more information on this person and what they're like. So with Pluto and Scorpio in the 12th house, maybe this is some of the placements that the person in mind has. Maybe this is some of your placements. However, we're going to go over some details and some characteristics and some traits of this person. So um, let's just talk about the 12th house first. So the 12th house is associated with the subconscious mind, the hidden realms, spiritual growth, and Pluto is the planet of transformation and regeneration. So in Scorpio, which is its natural ruling sign, this really intensifies the depth of the emotions and kind of the like psychological processes that are related to the subconscious. So I think that this person probably has a very rich, intense and inner world, intense inner world filled with hidden desires and fears and kind of these unconscious motivations. Um, I think that this person probably has a heightened sensitivity to hidden truths and energies beneath the surface of reality. So I do feel like this person is very, very intuitive, probably has some psychic abilities and the capacity to really dive into the depths of the unconscious mind. I do think that they have this like natural affinity for metaphysical subjects and kind of like esoteric knowledge. Um, I do think that this person 
probably goes through like intense periods of like introspection. I think that they are trying to face their deepest fears, their traumas, and kind of the shadow aspects of their psyche. And through this process, I feel like they have the potential to really experience like deep personal growth and like the spiritual evolution. Now, I do think that um, maybe this person is naturally inclined to keep their true feelings and their desires and their vulnerabilities hidden from others and I feel like they could be attracted to like mysteries and prefer to like work behind the scenes rather than in the spotlight. I feel like this person might struggle with like power dynamics and like control issues. I don't know if you have seen like with this person maybe some patterns of self-sabotage or like kind of behaviors that feel like seem compulsive or maybe power struggles in their personal relationships. Um, but yeah, I do think that, again, this person does have this, like, really natural affinity for, like, spiritual practices. I don't know if it's, like, meditation, yoga, psychotherapy, like, kind of using tools for self-discovery and inner, inner transformation. Um, and if any of this, like, information sounds like you and, like, you're the one who's interested in all of these things, I do have a podcast that kind of covers everything introspection, everything self-growth and um, I've things that are spiritual and esoteric so check out the link in my description for my podcast or you can just look up that's deep podcast um and yeah you i mean i have so many different topics i've got personality types i've got astrology um i've got mental health i've got you know self-growth just all of these different topics that are really exciting a lot of cool interviews on there too so link in the description if you're interested um and yeah, I just want to thank you so much, Pile 3. I do hope that you really enjoyed this reading. Please give this video a like if it resonates. It really helps the channel. Comment below with what pile you chose. I love to chat with you all in the comments. And subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself. I hope to see you back on the next video after this. I have a playlist with a ton of pick a card readings for you to check out. But if not this time, I will see you back on the next video. Bye, Pile 3. Hey Pile 4, welcome to your reading. Now let's dive in. Okay, so Pile 4. First card that you got is the Eight of Wands. You also got Coyote Spirit, Trust in Divine Detours. You've got Full Moon in Aquarius, Be Real. And we've got Refinement, Dahlia. We also have Flow, this Bluebird card you picked in the beginning. We have a Throat Chakra card and we have Larimar, it says Spaciousness. And we have Fear. This one says Safe Space. With the Eight of Wands here, this often symbolizes things like rapid progress or swift movement of a situation. So things with this connection, maybe they happened quickly, right? And events could have like really unfolded at this rapid pace. For some of you out there, I feel like this was kind of that quick burn type of connection. Like things happen just as fast as they ended for some of you out there. Um, but I definitely think that the person on your mind wishes that they would have continued to take the energy and the action and the forward movement that they needed with you, I feel like they wish that they would have pursued their goals with enthusiasm and determination. And the Eight of Wands can also represent things like communication and messages coming your way. So I definitely feel like this person wishes that they could still talk to you or um, wishes that they could still reach out to you in some way. I feel like they wish that they could maybe like email or call or text or engage in some sort of like correspondence with you and now for some of you I'm getting this feeling that you might have either blocked this person or unfollowed them on social media or maybe you deleted and blocked their phone number because for some of you out there I feel like when you're done you're done so in some readings the eight of wands can suggest travel or journeys or you know both both of it being literal or metaphorical so I feel like this connection may have had you embarking on like a physical journey or experiencing like a, a period of personal growth and exploration. And many of you learned a lot of things through this connection or from walking away from it, right? 
So if there's any tense energy between the two of you, I feel like this person wishes that they could release that tension or any sort of obstacles that's been holding this connection back. I do think that they wish that they could just let go of any sort of burdens and move forward with ease. And I don't think that they paid attention to like the urgency and the timing of everything in terms of like your connection in the past. So yeah, I, de I definitely feel like they didn't like act swiftly or like seize the moment when they should have or could have. And you know, opportunities could have been fleeting. And so they feel like they didn't take or they did not make decisions promptly and they didn't take advantage of circumstances when they were favorable, right? Like when you still cared, when you still cared about the connection. Because I'm feeling this energy of indifference from some of you here, like kind of the energy of like, I gave this connection my all and they didn't care at the time and now they do. And now you don't care as much, right? That's just kind of what happens sometimes when one person takes the other person for granted. Now we do have Coyote Spirit here and it says trust in divine detours. So pile four, I feel like this experience that you had with this person definitely taught you a lot about life and its ups and downs. I feel like it probably taught you to trust that there is this higher wisdom guiding your path. And sometimes what may seem like detours or unexpected twists are actually leading you towards greater growth and learning and alignment with your true purpose. And I think that surrendering control and trusting in divine guidance can really bring peace and clarity your way. Um, I feel like this whole experience with this person, it taught you to stay open and adaptable to change. And, you know, divine detours and unexpected twists can often give us opportunities for growth and expansion that we would have never thought of, right? So I feel like you've learned to embrace the journey with a sense of curiosity and flexibility. I also feel like you've learned to maintain a little bit of a lighter heart. You've learned to laugh at the unexpected twists and turns of life. And I think that you use humor as a powerful tool for navigating things like challenges and maintaining a positive perspective, right? I do feel like you've learned to tune into that intuition and your inner guidance and so that you could trust that what you're feeling is a result of everything that you've been through, right? Your body, um, your spirit, your emotions, it's telling you something. So I think that even when things didn't go according to plan, your intuition still provides you with like valuable insights and nudges in the right direction. I feel like now you can trust that you're always being guided towards what's best for you and your highest good. I feel like all of this has deepened your connection to spirituality and the divine. Um, I'm not sure if you dove more into prayer or meditation or connecting with nature, but I feel like um, you've nurtured your spiritual practice a, a bit more. And I think that it's provided you some relief and some solace and some guidance during times of uncertainty. So yeah, I think this card is all about just trusting that you're supported trusting that you're loved unconditionally by a higher power um, that's always working in your favor even when things don't seem to go according to plan. Now we have a full moon in Aquarius. This one says be real. So I feel like the person on your mind wishes that they could have been more real and authentic with you. Um, Aquarius energy really does encourage authenticity and individuality and so I feel like they didn't embrace who they truly were and they didn't have the chance to express themselves authentically without that fear of judgment or criticism. So I feel like they wish they could have allowed their unique personality and their quirks to shine brightly. I definitely feel like this person was unique, maybe a bit unconventional, maybe a little progressive, and I feel like they wish that they would have embraced this uniqueness and celebrated their diversity a bit more. I think that this person really appreciates the way that you let them be themselves and you, that you encourage them to break free from societal expectation and norms. Um, I feel like many of you encourage this person not to be afraid to march to the beat of their own drum and to chart their own path in life. And I think that they love how you know how to trust your intuition and how to follow your own truth, even if it's not what the mainstream is. And Aquarius is also associated with community and social networks. So I feel like this person felt like you were a like-minded individual who shared, you know, some of their values and their passions. So I really do get the feeling that they miss surrounding um, themselves with people like you who really appreciate and support their authenticity. Now, we also have Refinement, Dahlia. This is Scorpio energy here. Um, so the person 
on your mind definitely misses your elegance and your sophistication pile four i feel like they saw you as someone who's very refined very well polished and i think that they miss your attention to detail i also feel like you brought on a lot of like inner growth and development to this person's life i think that it taught them the importance of you know continuously striving to refine your character and your values and your skills um, I also feel like they definitely miss your beauty and your grace. They really do admire your ability to balance strength with sensitivity. And just like the Dahlia goes through changes as it grows and blooms, um, refinement is often like a very similar process, right? A process of evolution, a process of, you know, adapting to things. So this person's definitely inspired by your ability to Embrace change is an opportunity for growth and refinement. And I feel like um, you knew how to embrace like the idea of refinement as like an ongoing journey rather than a destination. And this person really looked up to that. So you definitely have a natural talent in really cultivating a mindset of appreciation for the present moment. And this kind of like continuous process of growth and refinement you're truly an inspiration to this person is what I'm feeling. Now, we also have the flow card here. And with this, I really feel like you help this person to learn that there's like another way to live life. And that way doesn't always have to be in this rigid, controlled, very serious manner. Like you can have fun with it. You can take things a little less seriously. And, you know, there is room for life to flow for you to not always be um, calculating your next step, right? Sometimes it feels really good to be in the flow and just trust that everything is unfolding in the way that it's supposed to be. So definitely feel like that person is, is inspired by your ability to do this. We also have the bluebird card here. And with this one, it says you are free to fly. Yeah. So I don't know if you had like had to let this person go or this person let you go, or you guys are like letting go in some way, but I'm feeling the need of like letting go in order to like, like feel autonomous, feel like you could go and do and be and have whatever it is that you wanted to do. And I think that, um, yeah, something to do with this connection has to do with like freedom, learning more about your freedom, learning more about your personal power, learning that you can go beyond certain limits that you set for yourself in your life. So yeah. Um, we also have Larimar. This is a throat chakra crystal and it says spaciousness. So the emotional qualities here says restores balance from emotional extremes, addresses bipolar disorder, OCD, PTSD, um, and anxiety related mental and emotional disorders, reduces stubbornness and a fear of change, calming and soothing, clears emotional blockages, enhances truthful communication. And the mantra here says, I welcome positive change. So yeah, I do feel like, again, the space that you held for this person is being brought up. This person feels like they needed that space to be held for them. Um, I feel like they've definitely gone through some serious like lows where feeling like such an outcast or feeling so different from the norm um, has made them really feel down in the dumps in ways that they probably haven't expressed to the world. So you holding that space for them, you being there, you applauding who they were at their individual core, I think that meant a lot to this person. Now we also have the safe space card here and it says, give your body and mind a place to feel safe. Think of a place, real or imagined, that feels safe to you. Bring it to life by picturing the things that you would see, feel, hear, smell, or even taste. Give this place a name. Now think of something that makes you annoyed. Notice where you feel that annoying annoyance. In your head, throat, chest, stomach, or even in your hands. Now imagine your safe place. Did you notice any shifts in your body? Our mind is powerful and we have the ability to create these shifts in our emotional state with intention and practice. Remember that your th Remember that your safe space is there to access whenever you need it. <clears throat> so again, our mind is powerful and we have the ability to create these shifts in our emotional state with intention and practice. So again, 
spaciousness, safe space. You were a safe space to this person. I feel like this person probably came to you when they were in need or maybe this person felt like a safe space to you at one point in time. Um, but that's definitely the energy here. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to roll the astro dice so I can get more information on the characteristics and traits of this person so that you can confirm. We have Saturn in Gemini in the 10th house. I feel like this person probably has a, more of like a serious and like disciplined approach to their communication. Um, I feel like maybe they're really good with like verbal or written communication, maybe journalism, public relations or teaching. Um, I also feel like this person is probably pretty methodical and disciplined um, in how they achieve their professional goals. Maybe they like to follow you know, procedures or protocols. Um, and, you know, with Gemini here, I feel like this person is probably very adaptable. They're very versatile. Um, they're probably resourceful problem solvers who can really, like, adapt, and you know, to changing circumstances. And um, I definitely feel like this person has this, like, intellectual curiosity. This person definitely needs to strike a balance between work and their personal life. Um, maybe they prioritize their career at the expense of, like, their emotional well-being or other you know their relationships um, and I think that they are still learning how to set boundaries when it comes to their work and then their personal life um, but yeah I think that this person's probably very successful as it has to do with their career especially in the long term so that is more about that and thank you so much pile four please give this video a like if it resonates comment below with what pile you chose um, I'd love to chat with you all in the comments and subscribe if you haven't already. Take care of yourself. I hope to see you on the next video after this. I have a playlist with a ton of pick a card readings on my channel for you to explore. But if not this time, I will see you on the next video. Bye, Pile4.